This is the first roll of film I have ever shot. And so far, the only roll of film that I have ever shot. It took me six months and traveling to five different states to be able to go through an entire roll of film. Let's look through them. Boosh! What's up guys? It's Ben back again with another video. Welcome to the first video of 2024. I hope you guys had a happy and safe new year. I'm really excited to see what this new year has in store for us. I know for a fact I'm graduating college in May, but as of right now, that's the only thing I really have planned. I would like to see the channel hit a thousand subscribers, so let's see what we can do. Some of you guys might remember watching the What's in My Camera Bag video that I put out a couple of weeks ago where I talked about the Canon AE-1, which is a film camera that I had in my backpack um, because I've been teaching myself film photography. And in that video, I talked about how I just got my first roll of film developed. This is the roll of film, it's in dividers. I have digital copies of them on the computer. And in this video, we're gonna go ahead and go over the photos that I took. I'm hoping that by going through these photos and showing you guys what I did well and what I didn't do well, will not only help me with learning what to do, but also help you guys in the future if you guys decide to pick up film as a hobby or even as a professional practice. But before we get started, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Ben. I make videos and vlogs about photography and a tech review every now and then. If that's something that you're interested in, consider subscribing. Join the family. Okay, really quick, a backstory on me. I've always shot digital. I've, I've never shot film before. I actually got my start in photography when I was around 11 or 12 going into middle school. After looking at some of my grandpa's old film cameras with my dad, which ironically are on display right back there, I decided that I wanted to give film a try. My dad and I decided to take my grandpa's old film cameras to a camera shop to see if they were still functional. We ended up getting a call about a week later telling us that none of the cameras were in operating condition and that it was gonna cost a lot of money to be able to replace the parts or even find parts for the cameras. Fast forward a couple of months, my dad surprised me with this, the Canon AE-1. I immediately did what everyone else would do. I got on YouTube and watched as many videos on how to work a film camera as possible. I probably watched more than 20 hours of video on YouTube trying to learn as much as I could about film photography, specifically on the Canon AE-1. I loaded the film into the camera and after messing up once and having to fish the film out of the canister, I was able to go out and go shooting. Now this roll of film went to five states, counting my own state of California. It also went to Arizona, Idaho, Utah, and Nevada. But instead of just telling you about it, let's hop into the computer so I can show you the first roll of film I have ever shot. Okay, um, new angle as well as boosh. We are now screen recording um, Lightroom Classic. Uh, let's go ahead and go through these photos. This photo right here was taken in Arizona. You can see that's my truck in the background here. Uh, this is a pine tree that's blocking it. I definitely underexposed this photo a lot and um, I don't even think that editing this would no, the editing this wouldn't help at all. So this is a this is kind of a lost photo, I guess. But that's okay. Not every photo is going to be a banger. We'll move on. Next photo. Uh, this was taken in Arizona as well. Uh, this is a forest, a pine forest. Um, I did add a little bit of an edit here. I just darkened it up just a little bit to give a little bit more detail into the bark of the tree. But that's about the extent that I would go on on this photo. Um, I don't think that I would want to edit film photos. Uh, because digital cameras have been trying to copy the look of film for so long since basically they were invented. But if I could add a little bit, mine as well. Uh, but I think straight out of camera is probably uh, the best. Okay, moving on. Uh, this is a photo of me and my girlfriend uh, in Arizona, same trip. Uh, this is the Canon R6 Mark II uh, right there. So I have my uh, two loves in one photo, which is great. Uh, this photo, uh, the exposure is great. If you look at the histogram, it looks pretty nice. I like the, the film grain that comes out of the camera. It looks really good. I wouldn't do anything with this photo. I'd post this immediately uh, because it just, it looks so good. This is a photo um, that I also took in Arizona. Um, I added a little bit of an edit to it. Um, I'm gonna go back and forth. So this is the original, this is the edit. 
Uh, if you look over here at the curves panel, I added just maybe a little bit of a uh, little bit more contrast to the photo. But the cool thing about film is that it's going to be a little bit more on the on the softer side. You know, I'm more of a contrast photographer anyway, so uh, not bad. I, I like this photo as well. OK, moving on to the next photo here. This is also in Arizona, same lake. Um, there's my girlfriend walking, being my model. I like this photo a lot. I like how the sky came out. Um, I like the details in the trees. I like how soft everything is, less contrast. I mean, I, I'm a very contrasty photographer and to see these soft photos that I've taken, I mean, it, it shows me a little bit of a different perspective. So uh, moving on to the next photo, uh, this is, I, I don't really care for this photo too much. It's very green. There's a bar on top for some reason and uh, this is just a creek or a creek, depending on where you're from. This is in Arizona as well. Uh, you might be able to darken it up just a little bit. That actually doesn't look too bad, but I I, I don't care for that picture too much. Again, I think I'm, I'm noticing a pattern um, that I am uh, I'm underexposing um, these photos a lot. And I think the reason behind me underexposing these pictures is because when I shoot digitally with my uh, Canon R6 Mark II, I normally will underexpose by one stop uh, because it's easier to pull details out of the shadows than it is to pull details out of blown out highlights. Um, so I'm thinking that when I uh, take photos with the film camera, to do the complete opposite, maybe even slightly overexpose um, my photos. I think that would probably be a good idea. So we'll go ahead and move on to the next photo here. Uh, this is another tree line. I really like this photo a lot. I might actually, maybe I'll bring the shadows down just a little bit and bring the highlights up just well, maybe bring the highlights down. Yeah, yeah, this is a good photo. I like the center tree is shorter than all the other trees. Generally, you would want a uh, taller tree amongst shorter trees. This is actually, uh, compositionally, I like it. I mean, this could, I could do without this, this. Even if I threw a crop on this really quick and brought it in just slightly here, I mean, keeping that tree in the center but still getting those branches out. I mean, that's not a bad picture. <laughs> this actually looks pretty good. I'd, uh, I'd post that. Yeah, sure. I'd post that. Um, this is in Idaho. This is a Mormon temple. This is a really good picture. I would probably brighten it just slightly, but that's about it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do anything else. Uh, this one is underexposed of the same temple in Idaho. Um, I don't know if I could save this. Yeah, no, I don't think I can. You know, you live and you learn. All right, uh, next photo. This is the same temple. It's underexposed, but I think that the, the silhouette works for it. I kind of wish this tree wasn't there. You know, there's things that you don't remember uh, taking with these photos. I, I, I took this picture in April, so yeah, I didn't remember this tree being there. <laughs> Uh, next photo here. Uh, this is a weird one. Um, it's kind of washed out a little bit. I mean, even if I darkened it. Yeah, this is a, this is a fail. This is a failed attempt right here. I don't even know what I did wrong. If you know what I did wrong, comment it down below. I'd love to know what I did wrong because I can't tell if I, un I'm pretty sure I underexposed it, but it looks bright. Yeah, I don't know. So, uh, if you guys know where I messed up on this, um, comment it down below. I'd, I'd like to know. Uh, next photo, same thing. This is underexposed as well. Yeah, I I have a problem with underexposing, I guess. That makes sense. Uh, this is in um, Baker, Baker, California. Um, it's the world's largest thermometer. I took uh, this picture. I was shooting directly into the sun, so that's why this is underexposed here. I don't know. It, it kind of has its own vibe to it. Uh, I'd get rid of this for sure. That is annoying, but it has its own vibe. Uh, I took another one here. Uh, this is cool. I like this. I'd get rid of this bar though. Yeah, that's cool. I don't, I don't mind this. I don't mind that. I'd get rid of that bird. Look at that. I caught a bird. <laughs> that looks like a bird, right? Let's go with bird. I'm pretty sure that's a bird. Yeah, that's a bird. Okay. Next up. This is also in in Baker. Um, it's the country store. I recommend going there. They have random sodas and a whole bunch of candy. This one, I don't know. I'd probably darken it up a little bit and bring up the highlights, but that's probably about it. Um, it's again, underexposed in this area. You can barely tell this is a parking lot, but I'd post this, but I'd, 
I would probably do something like that to it. <laughs> that actually doesn't look too bad. Yeah, I'd post that, why not? Uh, this next photo here, uh, this is from when we were in the desert. Uh, I think the two times before last. Um, if you remember the first time we went to the desert, uh, we found this abandoned um, RV and there's bullet holes in it and it's like super um, crazy looking. And every time we go out there, it's just more dilapidated. And so it's it's really fun to, to take pictures of. So this is a good photo, I think. This is a, I darken it, but that's probably about it. Yeah, why not? This one's good by itself. This is the, the next photo. It's a detailed shot of uh, of the, one of the rust holes. This is a good photo in itself. I like that, why not? This is also a really good photo, a little bit on the washy side. Uh, almost has a blue green tint to it, which is cool. And then this is uh, the actual motor home. If you go back to the first video where we went to the desert uh, to, to, and took photos and stuff, it looked different than this. Go back, watch those videos, they're really cool. This was at a zoo. I, I like the, the ropes and the, the wood and it kind of gives you that leading line going back here into the back corner, keeps going. I like it, it looks good. I would almost want it in black and white. Increase the contrast, darken the shadows, bring up the highlight. Like I think that would look sick, which sucks because this photo was taken on film and you want that film look, right? But sometimes things just look way better in black and white. Uh, this is a good photo too. I believe this was taken in Nevada. Yeah, I think this was taken in Nevada. This is actually straight out of camera, a great photo. I like it. I like it. It almost reminds me of like those old school um, photos from, from back in the day, like the 70s. Yeah, no, I like this photo. I like this photo a lot. So overall, I'd have to say shooting film has been a massive learning experience. Having to take the time to think about what you're shooting and not just, you know, holding down the trigger and hoping for the best, it makes you value the photos that you're taking more. It makes the photos a little bit more sentimental. And in this case, you have 36 shots. There's not a lot of room for error. I was super scared to take photos. I was worried I was gonna run out of film. And I think that's why it took me so long to go through that role. So the lesson that I learned from this experience is buy more film, carry it with me. And as you can see from the photos that I took, I'm still learning, but I felt like I was relearning everything. I had to pay attention to exposure. I had to pay attention to my shutter speed. It, it made me feel like I was, I was learning photography again, it almost gave me that spark that I got originally when I first started uh, photography and it's a really humbling experience and I can't wait to finish this roll of black and white film to show you guys if I got any better but as always I'm gonna throw it back to you have you ever shot film do you want to shoot film let me know in the comments down below. As always guys, if you wanna support the channel, the merch link is in the description down below. Use discount code BOOSH10 for 10% off at checkout. If you like this video, give it a like. If you really like this video, hit that subscribe button. Join the family. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay classy. Bye. I got this, uh, this knife for Christmas from my girlfriend. You open it up. You got a sharpening tool here and the knife right here. Look at this. That's staghorn. And if I open it up really quick, Damascus. I don't know if you guys know that, but I'm, I'm a collector of knives. Anyway. See you guys.